championship. Old Dominion undefeated in their last five. Four wins and a draw in there for ODU. Anson Dorrance is the head coach of the Tar Heels, 44th season for the 1974 North Carolina alum, the only head coach this program has ever known. 916 wins to his credit and just 85 losses for the best to ever do it. On the other bench, Angie Hines, ninth year for the Scotland native, 72, 67, and 24 at ODU. She's led the Monarchs into the NCAA tournament in consecutive years. We are set for the opening round of the NCAA Division I Women's Soccer Championship. Julia Dorsey over the ball for North Carolina. Seven in blue. Dorsey has moved into a starting center back spot for the Tar Heels. That's been a storyline all year for North Carolina is the thin back line depth. Anson Dorrance said coming into the season, this is perhaps one of his deepest teams he has had in his legendary career, with the exception of the center back spot. So here's an opportunity in the box. Emily Colton centers for Ali Sentner. Cleared away. All the way back to the constant on the back line for the Tar Heels and Tori Hansen. But coming into the year, center back a little bit of a thin spot for the Tar Heels. Macy Bell goes down with an injury in the first game of the year against Tennessee. Bell lost for the season. Kaylee Herr, a true freshman, brought into the lineup to replace her. Suffers a season-ending injury in Carolina's first loss of the year against UCLA back on September 4th. So Julia Dorsey, a career outside back, has to move inside with Emily Moxley taking over at the outside right back spot for Anson Dorrance's team. Or wouldn't you know that Dorsey would go down with an injury late in the season? Was unable to play in the last four games of the regular year, did return for the ACC tournament, and was questionable into today's game with an illness, so good to see her out there. Speaking of players that have missed time, Talia Della Peruzza, 24 in blue making just her third start of the season. Carolina back on the attack here. This is Isabel Cox, the veteran senior. Cut out well by Turkoglu. 16 in navy blue. Eche Turkoglu, one of two all-conference first team selections on this Old Dominion roster. The other, Carla Morich. Back to Emmy Allen it goes. The Carolina keeper starting for the 21st time in as many games for the Tar Heels tonight. Allen entered the season, splitting time with Mars Josephson, then won the job outright early September, and though Josephson has played some and some mop-up duty throughout the rest of the season, it's been Emmy Allen's job. First year as a starter, replacing Claudia Dickey. Cox drops it back. Moxley in the overlapping run. Cox again. Looking for Ali Sentner, highly decorated red shirt freshman. Sentner with space, takes a left-footed shot that's handled by Old Dominion's keeper. Emily Bredick making her 10th start of the season for Old Dominion. Starting her ninth game in the last 10 for the Monarchs. The only exception in that stretch, October 23rd against Georgia State on the road. Aaron Jones started that game for ODU. Patterson. Slipped forward and won back by Emma Tarafenko. Turkoglu widens out and here's some space for ODU. Vanessa Arndt, a local product from Cary, North Carolina, 23 in Navy. Forward for Megan Watts wearing the captain's armbands. First touch for Carla Morich. This is Morich, hat trick in the Sunbelt Championship game. Morich takes a look. Emmy Allen is there. What a feast or famine season it's been for Carla Morich, the all Sunbelt first team selection and most outstanding player in the Sunbelt tournament. She has eight goals this season, but they've come in just four games. The hat trick in the conference championship game, she also had a brace against South Alabama and a brace against Coastal Carolina. The only one goal game she's had all year, the game-winning goal in the one nothing road win at Georgia State October 23rd. Just a classic case of when it rains, it pours. Ball too heavy for Sentner. And a deep throw for Old Dominion. 
Moritz, a senior out of Hamburg, Germany. Offensive MVP of the Conference USA tournament a year ago. So back-to-back -back conference tournament accolades for Moritz. There's Moritz involved in the play. Moxley takes it back for the Tar Heels. Watts challenging. Switch a play for Carolina. Tori Hansen's been lethal at the penalty spot this season. Seven goals for Hansen, including five in ACC play. Della Peruta. Moxley, good footwork to maintain possession against the sideline. ODU trying to use that sideline as an extra defender. Turkoglu takes it back, one of the other captains in all conference selections. A couple of goals on the season for number 16 in Navy Blue, Eche Turkoglu. But plays just as important of a role defensively for the Monarchs. Della Peruta cut out by Turkoglu, no foul. John Rush, our center referee, says play on. Della Peruta widens out for Cox. Moxley now making a run. Avery Patterson, 10 goals this season, including Carolina's lone goal in the ACC tournament. Fires and across, settled down by Colton. An opportunity for Ali Sentnor. Keeper off her line. Sentnor puts the Tar Heels on top. Six-minute goal for Ali Sentner, her sixth of the season. And all that was set up by a beautiful cross. Colton flicked it on. Keeper Bregnick came off her line. And look at the way that Sentner turned and controlled that, firing it into the goal. So a one nothing game in favor of North Carolina just six minutes into the contest. Unassisted goal for Sentner. Redshirt freshman, one of the most sought after recruits in the country in the class of 2021. Allie Sentner making her unofficial Carolina debut in an exhibition game against UNCW last August. Suffered a torn ACL in the first half of that exhibition. Missed the season. Rehabbed from the injury. Came back to debut as a Tar Heel this year. And Anson Dorrance has called her a professional on an amateur contract. Her mission each and every day is working toward making the United States full national team. And it's a goal that Anson Dorrance believes is very much achievable for Ali Sentner. Scored her first Carolina goal against UNCW back on August 21st. First corner of the game for the Tar Heels. First time Carolina's had a corner since the ACC semifinals. Their first game of the year without a corner in the loss to Florida State. Tessa De La Rose. All ACC third team and all ACC freshman team selection. Serves it inside the box. Sentinel. Drop back for Libby Moore. Moxley heads it on. Opportunity potentially for Patterson, but defended well. Carolina keeps the pressure up. Della Rose slips it back for Moore, who's taken over the starting spot at holding defensive mid over the last five games. Good ball forward. No one home in the center of the box, though, for the Tar Heels. Cleared away by Old Dominion. Angie Hines said her team was going to have to be brave defensively tonight to have the opportunity to compete with North Carolina. Try and earn a result. Here's Sentinor again. Other than that one look inside the box for ODU, that Old Dominion defense has been tested early and often tonight. Julia Davelier, Jenna Davelier rather, Davelier 
freshman who's listed as a forward on the roster, 22 in Navy. Has been playing defense, though, this season. 16 starts, her 17th of the year tonight. She'll execute the throw-in. Started each conference game for ODU. Tori Hansen. Forward one touch, Della Peruta. Moxley all sorts of space. Good ball forward. Danae Harper, the one starter for ODU who did not start the conference championship game, plays it back to the keeper. Switch to the left flank. Della Rose keeps it at her feet. Moore has it taken away by Morich. Watts, the captain. Watts doesn't have help in the center of the field, and Della Rose cuts it out. Megan Watts scored the game-winning goal in Old Dominion's inaugural Sunbelt Conference game against Louisiana. Scored against Arkansas State, game-winning goal in the Sunbelt quarterfinals. And the six-seeded Monarchs upseated, upset the third-seeded Red Wolves. Paved the way for advancing on PKs in the semifinal. And that dramatic overtime win against James Madison to claim the conference tournament crown. And you really have to hand it to Old Dominion how they have entered a new conference this year, a conference move that was certainly made with football and basketball in mind. Moving out of Conference USA, where Angie Hind was the conference coach of the year last year, where they won the league, but into a new conference, playing a new set of opponents. There were some teams that went with them from Conference USA, Marshall and Southern Miss. Reunited with former CAA conference mate James Madison there in the Sun Belt. But ODU stepping up to the challenge, and especially after an 0-4 start. Since that 0-4 start, the Monarchs 9-4-3 on the campaign and unbeaten in their last five. And in talking to Angie Hind about her team's start, she said, you know, it was four tough teams. Auburn, SEC team obviously, William & Mary, that's a regional rivalry. East Carolina, another regional rivalry, one of the better mid-major programs in the region, and then Virginia Tech, an ACC team. And so Coach Hines said, I think we were in all of those games. Morich sees an opportunity, go by the wayside, but yet didn't get the results. And then you look up four games in, and it's how did we get here? Long ball forward, looking for Patterson. Headed away by Riley Kennett. Kennett's played nearly every minute this season on the back line for ODU. A Monarchs team that focused on seizing every moment from that point forward after starting 0-4. Here's the Tar Heels in the box again, and it's Kennett. Does well to send it away. But from the 0-4 start, Couple of wins, Longwood and Richmond in non-league play, a draw with American, then the Sun Belt opening win against Louisiana. The Monarchs had found their footing at that point. Moxley served forward too heavy for Cox. Fortuitous bounce to Patterson. Back for Tory Hansen. Hansen, 22 in Carolina Blue. Has been the steadying force on what's been a makeshift back line at points this season. She has played more minutes this year than the previous three years of her career combined. Seven goals to show for it. Scoring directly off a corner against Duke. Scored against Tennessee in the opener. And then has become lethal on PK. Scored a goal in three straight games on a PK in ACC play. Wake Forest, the one goal and a one nothing win. Florida State, goal in what wound up being a 2-1 come from behind Tar Heel victory, and then a 4-0 win against Miami.
Colton. Back for the aforementioned Hansen. Dorsey now, two-sport athlete who also plays defender on Carolina's National Championship women's lacrosse team in search of her second national championship in one calendar year. 22-0 and undefeated national champions this past spring for Carolina's women's lacrosse team. Now Dorsey in search of a soccer national title here in the fall. Saw Megan Watts calling for her teammates to push up. Watts won that ball. Had to wait for help to arrive from behind, though. Throw in for Riley Kennett. Headed out by Moxley. Turgerloo sends it forward. Here comes Sentner on the counter. Good ball for Patterson. Settled down. Della Peruta. Della Peruta wheels around her defender. Long run for Hansen to track this one down. She'll wisely play it back to the keeper, Allen. Just over 15 minutes gone. Opening round of the NCAA Division I Women's Soccer Tournament. North Carolina and Old Dominion meeting for the first time as varsity programs. Allie Sentner over the ball right now. 21 in Carolina Blue scoring her first career NCAA tournament goal in the sixth minute. Putting the Tar Heels on top 1-0. That's where the score stands now. The winner of this one will move on to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. The rest of that mini bracket is set. Here's another chance for Sentner. Sentner inside the box. Falls down. Play on. Della Rose keeps possession for the Tar Heels. Moxley now. Moxley slipped forward for Cox. And Old Dominion does well to get it out of the box, but still on their heels defensively. So we told you the winner of this one gets Georgia. The rest of next week's round of 32 and round of 16 quadrant is set. BYU, 3-0 winners last night against Utah Valley. The Cougars move on to next week, as do the Stanford Cardinal. Blowout, 6-0 win over San Jose State today. So if North Carolina wins here tonight, Tar Heels would host that grouping of teams. So it would be Carolina, Georgia, and then BYU, Stanford, also here at Dorrance Field next week, if Old Dominion's able to battle back and spring the upset, then that quadrant would take place out in Palo Alto, California. Emily Colton. Look at the speed from Watts on the counter. Megan Watts slips past Delarose. Good ball forward for Morich. Tough angle, though. And it's out off of Morich. Julia Dorsey took that ball off her body and still ushered it out of bounds off of the Monarch player. Patterson, challenge from behind. Sentinel streaking forward, centered back toward Patterson. It looked like a beautiful buildup starting, goes by the wayside for the Tar Heels. North 
Carolina, the only team to participate in now all 41 NCAA women's soccer tournaments. In the previous 40, they've moved on to that second round 39 times, the one exception last year. You know, there was some buzz throughout the soccer world about North Carolina being seeded as a number two seed. Notre Dame and Florida State earning the one seeds out of the ACC, UCLA of the Pac-12, Alabama of the SEC being the other two one seeds. So I asked Anson Dorrance when I talked to him, what's the bigger chip on the shoulder for this team? Is it being a number two seed, or is it trying to bounce back from your first ever first round exit last year? And he said without hesitation, it is trying to come back from that first round exit. It's something that still stings for the program that these players think about all throughout this year. And after falling to South Carolina, who wound up making a pretty deep run in the tournament last year, as he said, hey, perhaps maybe they were overseeded or underseeded a little bit. So here's Watts taking a look past Morich. Sliding play made by Allen. Good idea by Old Dominion. Perhaps their most dangerous threat so far. But returning nearly the entire roster from last year with the exception of goalkeeper Claudia Dickey. These Tar Heels hungry to put that loss in the rear view. And get back to their winning ways in the NCAA tournament. You know, I asked Anson, do you still get excited for these? This is number 41. And he goes, absolutely. Still so excited. Still plenty nervous. He said, I always get worried that we're headed for elimination every single round. But for someone who has won 21 College Cups and who has been to the College Cup 30 times, way more often than not, that elimination does not come. His team on top here won nothing. Tori Hansen over the ball for a free kick. Dominion has kept this a 1-0 game since the sixth minute when Allie Sentner scored for the Tar Heels. Colton trying to double the advantage. Too heavy for Sentner. Roll away. But you get the impression that if Old Dominion's going to try and battle back in this one, they need to get somebody else involved offensively beyond just the duo of Morich and Watts. ODU wants to play in a 4-4-2. That's where they're most comfortable. Morich and Watts have combined for 13 of the team's 22 goals this season, including all four in that Sunbelt Conference Tournament final last week. But if you're Angie Hind and the Monarchs here, you're looking for someone else to get involved, make a run. Can it forward? And this pressure from Watts and Morich, it's what we expected to see from ODU. Angie Hines said being aggressive and trying to create some pressure was a key to success for the Monarchs tonight. And the word she used multiple times when we talked to her was we have to find a way to be brave. In this atmosphere against this team, defending. Perhaps a chance here for Sentinor. Cox outside the box. Widens for Sentinor looking to get in across. Here it comes. Patterson. Slipped over to Della Peruta. Takes a look. It's chipped over the bar. It'll be out for a Carolina corner. But the Tar Heels had all sorts of numbers in the box and unable to capitalize. So a nice cross from Sentner. And then that body right there next to Avery Patterson. 
That's Jenna Dave Lear, just a freshman. Playing a key role defensively there. Second corner for Carolina. Emily Bredick, in all sorts of traffic, able to take it in for Old Dominion. Couple of Carolina subs. Isabel Cox and Libby Moore have gone off. Maggie Pierce has entered for the Tar Heels. She'll play the six, and there's Pierce involved in the play there, 28 in Carolina Blue. Also a sub on the front line, Maddie Deline, speedy freshman from Minnesota. Former track star there in the land of 10,000 lakes, number five in Carolina Blue. This is Deline. Moxley sent forward for Sentner. Long distance look. That was Anna Torslu, senior from Denmark, who started every game for Old Dominion. Trying to take a long look. One nothing North Carolina. Look at this space for Della Peruta. Sentinor beats her defender. Here comes numbers for the Tar Heels. Brilliant job by Tara Fanko to win it back for Old Dominion. Terminate that threat. If you're a Carolina fan, it has to be really nice to see that players like an Ali Sentner are getting involved in creating the offense. Anson Dorrance said after the Florida State game, it cannot just be the Avery Patterson show. Sure, it's nice that she has 10 goals on the season, but we need other players to get involved up front to create chances. And that's happened so far tonight. Della Peruzza forward for Patterson. Deline. Dalene trying to turn the corner. Flag goes up. Shot number in this one, 3-2 in favor of the Tar Heels. Shots on goal, 2-1 Carolina. Column that counts, 1-0 Tar Heels. Moxley. Build up here for the Monarchs from the left flank. Watts just outside the box. And it's out off Old Dominion, Carolina's throw. Morich. Maggie Pierce simply took it off her feet. Pierce holding midfielder. 13 starts this year. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Libby Moore has kind of taken over the starting job, at least over the last handful of games at the six for the Tar Heels. Pierce handled it early in the year. Looks like we'll have a sub here for Old Dominion. Danae Harper comes off. Harper off. Malia Mariano in for the first time. Norfolk, Virginia native, where Old Dominion is located. She's played in every game. Mariano, 12 starts as well this year for the Monarchs. 17 in navy blue. A 
And while the Tar Heels have had their chances as this half has gone along since that goal in the sixth minute, it's been more sustained possession through the midfield versus Old Dominion's defense having to constantly be ready. Here's Deline, though, inside the box. Deline brings the keeper off her line and scores. Goal, Second goal in her Tar Heel career. And what a moment of brilliance. Beautiful ball from just outside the box in the defensive half of the field to connect with Deline. Streaking forward herself. And the Tar Heels double the lead. So an assist to Tori Hansen. For Hansen, it's the first assist of the season. And now you start to feel a lot more comfortable if you're North Carolina. Still a long way to go in this one. Over an hour of soccer to play. Darlene from Hanson in the 29th minute doubles the lead for the Tar Heels. And, you know, there's an old adage that 2 nothing is the most dangerous lead in soccer. Usually that's not the case for North Carolina. But can't help but think back to September 17th if you're a Tar Heel fan, their ACC opener against Virginia. Carolina led 2-0 at the half. The Cavaliers scored three times after halftime. Watts, perhaps with a chance for ODU, widens it out. Served back inside the box. Carolina will have it back. That game against Virginia, three goals in the second half for the Cavaliers. They won it 3-2. It was the first time in Tar Heel program history that Carolina squandered a two-goal lead and lost in regulation. Just one of two defeats in ACC play, though. But it is kind of a quirk of this year. Carolina had not blown a lead since 2017. All four of their losses this season, the Tar Heels have led at some point. one nothing over UCLA, lost 2-1. The Virginia game led 2-0, lost 3-2. At Virginia Tech... Led 1-0, lost 2-1. Same story against Florida State last week. Led 1-0 and lost 2-1. And then on the flip side, you look at games that Carolina has won yet conceded a goal in. There's been three of them. Missouri a 3-1 win, Central Florida 2-1 win, Florida State a 2-1 win. The UCF and Florida State games, Tar Heels trailed 1-0. Kind of odd. Here comes the line change for Carolina. Anson Dorrance's famed game changers. Don't call them subs. A second line of players that provide just as much quality as the starting group on the field. And a whole bunch of subs coming in for North Carolina. Bella Sember is in. Paige Tolentino, Ali Gambone. Emily Murphy, Emerson Elgin does replace Julia Dorsey. If you weren't with us right off the top, told you that Dorsey was questionable with an illness. And in fact, when I talked to Anson Dorrance this morning, he said Elgin would be making the start, but here she is coming off the bench. Also, Tori Della Peruta, the younger sister of Talia Della Peruta, checks in on the forward line. Nine in Carolina blue. You see her in the middle of your screen right now. Allie Gambone, team captain, playing against her home state team. She's native of Clifton, Virginia. Amy Allen. Now 
Hasn't been tested all that much today. One save for Allen. Tolentino the substitute for in Carolina Blue. Hansen heads it forward. Mariano wins it back. Moxley. And a foul. So ODU a free kick after the handball. Anessa Arndt over the ball. Sophomore from Cary, Crossroads Flex High School, 2018 North Carolina State Champion. Ten times this season has played the full 90. Part of an old Dominion back line that throughout this season has accounted for eight clean sheets. Tolentino with space up the flank. Serves a nice ball forward for Della Peruta. Can she win the foot race? Emerson Elgin made two starts at the end of the year, six in Carolina Blue, when Julia Dorsey was out due to injury. Mainly a bench contributor, though, this season. Here's Emily Murphy, the England native. Murphy, look at this speed. Della Peruta has it taken away by Tarafenko. Gambone hustling over. Execute the quick throw in. Murphy again. Gambone turns on the Jets. Crossed in front. Sember can't settle it down. Della Peruta does get to it. Murphy drops it back for Tolentino. You can feel the pressure building for North Carolina once again as we've rolled under 10 minutes left in the first half. Dolly and a goal scored just a moment ago for the second time in her career. Gambone played back. Moxley takes a look over the bar. ODU a sub. Talia Marisi will appear. Another look there. Just a bit too heavy for Gambone, who had a nice angle there at the far post. Gambone had to make an extra run away from the goal mouth to track the ball down. Critical final eight and a half minutes of this opening half. North Carolina can find their way to a third goal. That would just about wrap this one up. On the flip side, if Old Dominion can find their way back in, able to put one on the board, cut the deficit in half with the teams heading to halftime to catch their breath. It's exactly what Angie Hines' team could have dreamed up. And of course, ODU saw last week firsthand how much a game can change when you're up 2-0 and the opponent scores just before the half. ODU scoring twice in the first 12 minutes of the Sun Belt Championship game. James Madison converted a penalty kick in the 43rd. Flipped the momentum a little bit. Ultimately, the teams went to overtime, tied at 3. ODU would score the game winner in the 106th. Carla Morich's third of the day. Throw for Tolentino.
Turk Blue. Taken down by Sember. And the senior from Istanbul wearing the captain's armband. All conference selection loses her footing. Conference USA co-freshman of the year back in 2019. Also all conference USA in 2020. Highly decorated career in Norfolk across two conferences. Free kick from about 30 yards out. Played short. Monarchs fighting through into the box. Substitute off the bench. Yulia Kristuk, 18 in navy blue. Trying to make her way forward there. Two more subs here for the Monarchs. India Hunter, 25 in navy coming on. As well as Maya Lennon. Lennon, 8 in navy blue. Graduate transfer from Middle Tennessee State. Long throw from Lennon into the box. Two substitutes trying to connect. Intended target there was Hunter. Turkoglu keeps it alive. Lennon again. Good distance and power on those throws. Key now for Old Dominion is to turn that into possession that they can sustain. Just trying to win the ball back and play it all the way back into their defensive half. It's exactly what the Tar Heels want to see. Kristuk pushing and shoving, loses her footing. What a year it's been for Yulia Kristuk. In her ODU season, she's appeared in every game, started 12 of them, but also competed this summer at the senior national team level with her native Ukraine. It's one thing to represent your country on in the international level. It's another to feel the emotions of part of the ongoing conflict in her home country. Dalina goal scorer earlier in the half. Sub for the Monarchs here. Maddie Dalina's second goal of her Carolina career. First one October 6th against Pitt. I told you Manny Dahlien would track star in Minnesota. 2021, the state meet. She swept the 100, 200, and 400 meter dashes. Champion in all three events. Maggie Pierce takes it back for the Tar Heels. Maurice off the bench. Murphy now looking forward. Frustrated to look for Tori Della Peruta. Thought she could have gotten there. Three minutes left in the opening half. Old Dominion in North Carolina. Allie Sentner in the sixth minute. Maddie Dowling in the 29th. The goal scorers for North Carolina. Winner of this one moves on to face the Georgia Bulldogs. If it's the Tar Heels, will be here at Dorrance Field next week. If it's Old Dominion, it would be in Palo Alto, California. There's Stanford and BYU await in the other game of the round of 32 in this portion of the bracket next week. They would come here to Dorrance Field should the Tar Heels win tonight. Stanford would get to host should Old Dominion come back and earn the upset.
Free kick here from just outside the box. Chris Duke will take it. Prime opportunity for Old Dominion in the waning minutes of the opening half. Serves it softly inside the six. Punched out by Allen. Second ball. Dalene does well to help clear it away for the Tar Heels. And look at this space. Della Peruta. Tori Della Peruta, the footwork to evade defenders and keep it alive. Murphy now. Sent back forward looking for Sember. Sember. Her cross. Can Murphy get ahead to it? She can, but not on frame. And it's actually determined out off Old Dominion in the third corner of the half for North Carolina. So the third corner of the half. The Tar Heels chant starts up here. Headed on by Hansen, still free and smothered inside the box. Emily Bredick able to get there. Good ball in the corner, right to the head of Hansen. And perhaps one more look off the head of Murphy could have made it 3 0 Tar Heels. Bredick doing well to keep this a 2 0 game for her Monarchs. Just seconds away from halftime. One last gasp here for North Carolina to try and add a third before the break. Hunter with 10 seconds left for ODU. Chris Duke's ball blocked by Tolentino, and that's how the first half will come to a close. Second seeded North Carolina opened the scoring in the sixth minutes. Allie Sentinel with her first career NCAA tournament goal, sixth goal of the season. And freshman Maddie Dahlin, her first NCAA tournament goal, just her second as a Tar Heel. Off the bench in the 29th, it is North Carolina 2, Old Dominion nothing. Come on back in 15 minutes. We'll have half number two here from Dorrance Field on ESPN+. Plus. Ali Sentner in the sixth minute, and Maddie Dolly in the substitute in the 29th minute. Shots 6 2 Tar Heels. They've taken the last three in this game. Shots on goal 4 1 Carolina. Saves 2 1 favoring Old Dominion. Fouls 6 4. More committed by the Tar Heels. 3 0 advantage in corners for Carolina. Neither team has been called offside. Carolina in the familiar Carolina blue. Old Dominion in the navy blue. Winner of this game moves on to the second round of this tournament, awaiting the Georgia Bulldogs, seventh seed in this quadrant. North Carolina wins. They would earn the right to play the next two games, potentially at home. Georgia would come visit for that matchup against the Tar Heels. Also, Stanford and BYU would come play here in Chapel Hill, and then those two winners also facing off next weekend in the round of 16. Old Dominion, though, will need to pull the proverbial rabbit out of a hat with three goals in the second half. It's been done just once in program history against the Tar Heels for a team to score three in a second half and take a 2-0 halftime deficit, turn it into a 3-2 win in regulation. And then, of course, earlier this year, Virginia Cavaliers did it. Carolina fans probably sick and tired of hearing about that game. But off we go in half number two. North Carolina the only team to participate in what's now all 41 NCAA tournaments. That in and of itself is remarkable. But the fact that in the previous 40, they've made the College Cup in 30 of them. That's a 75% success rate. And they've won the national title in 21. That's over 50% success rate, which is what made last year's first round exit to South Carolina a 1-0 final one year ago tomorrow. 
even more shocking. And as Anson Doran said, it's created a chip on the shoulder of everybody in this program. They've taken it with, with them into this season, now finally getting the chance to return to their home field for the NCAA first round. And an opportunity to put that behind them once and for all. Even with all that success, though, North Carolina is on their longest national championship drought in program history. They will go 10 years without a title if they cannot win it this year. 2012, the last time that Carolina won a college cup. They've gotten close. Dropped national championship games in 2018 to Florida State, 2019 a PK heartbreaker to Stanford. Reached the College Cup again in 2020. Fell to eventual national champion Santa Clara in the semifinals. So on that College Cup stage, three of the last four years. And the opportunity to return there this year would mean playing close to home. The College Cup will be contested in Cary, North Carolina. Wake Med Soccer Park, semifinals December 2nd. Championship December 5th. It's moved permanently to Monday night now on ESPNU. Cross sent in by Ali Sentner, kept alive by Isabel Cox. Cleared out of there. Tar Heels will keep possession. Moxley. Libby Moore has it taken away by Turkoglu. Turkoglu speeding forward. Look at Libby Moore closing in from behind to win that ball back. Mentioned Moore's name a couple of times in the first half. 20 in Carolina Blue. A player who has come on as a starter here late in the season. Great story for Manson about... Libby Moore's recruitment process, which essentially there was none of. She came to Carolina as a walk-on, and Anson will tell you he likes to make sure that his players know what to expect when they're coming into his program. So he met with Libby and her parents, and he said, I'll be honest with you, I don't think you're going to play a minute at the Division I level. But all she does, he said, is work and work all day, every day, and Moore has made herself into a starter here in her senior campaign. Wilmington, North Carolina native and a home state product. Here comes Avery Patterson. Patterson with a look. 3-0 Tar Heels. Yet again, Carolina scores off a long ball. Patterson steps past her defender inside the box and the right-footed shot for her 11th goal of the season. Nine goals in ACC play, fourth in the Atlantic Coast Conference, scored her 10th of the year. In that ACC championship loss last weekend to Florida State. Now number 11 off Tori Hansen's second assist. Hansen came into this game. Seven goals, no assists. Now seven goals, two assists. Playing directly, yielding dividends for the Tar Heels who now lead 3-0. And can smell that whole matchup with the Georgia Bulldogs now. Still a ways to go, well over 40 minutes, but that was what the Tar Heels needed coming out of the halftime locker room to really take control of this game. Thinking perhaps more. Look at this. Look at Patterson. Stopped. Still free, though, in the box. Bounces away. Speed from Moore to take it back for the Tar Heels. Moxley. Forward, headed on. Patterson loses her footing. Incidental contact, says John Rush, our center official tonight. It's gathered in by Emily Bredick. Patterson streaking in from outside the box. Shakes off the defender. Bredick there to make the save. So even though Emily Bredick has conceded the three goals tonight, she is... Also come up with three saves in this contest. A player starting for the ninth time in the last ten games for ODU. ODU came into the season with Casey Perry being named preseason all Sun Belt. The goalkeeper of the year last year in Conference USA battled a back injury Perry did in the spring portion 
of the offseason last year and as a result was hampered a little bit coming into this year. But it created a competition, a three-way competition between Perry, Bredick, and Aaron Jones, a transfer from Liberty who came into the program a couple of years ago. And Jones has made 11 starts. She's made the most starts this season for Old Dominion. But Bredick's been kind of the hot hand of late, though Jones did come in in that James Madison game last week. Angie Hine, the head coach of the Monarchs, said that it's almost as if I can flip a coin to decide who's going to be my goalkeeper on a given day because I've got three quality keepers this season, and that is a really good problem to have. And she said that not only is it a good problem to have, but it's one she hasn't really had before in her coaching career. Tessa De La Rose in the overlapping run from the outside back spot. Her cross headed away by Riley Kennett. And even if tonight does not end in Old Dominion's favor, Megan Watts moving forward, trying to put the Monarchs on the scoreboard, cut out by Moore. Back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances for the first time in program history. This is just the third time ODU's played on this stage. First time... Way back in 2006, they took on Wake Forest, fell 4 nothing. Last year gave Duke a game, took until the 90th minute for the Blue Devils to score in a one nothing victory. And tonight taking on North Carolina. More than anything, it's a byproduct of geography, the fact that the NCAA utilizes geography in setting up these first round matchups and ODU's location the Hampton Roads area nearby so many ACC schools. Sentinor flicks it back to Della Peruta. That's Talia Della Peruta. We've seen both the sisters appear in this game. Tessa Della Rose. Deep throw for the Tar Heels here. Now an 8-2 advantage in shots. Last five shots in this game dating back to the first half have been taken by Carolina. Switch of play. Della Peruta all sorts of space through the midfield. Has Moxley on the outside as well. Della Peruta pushing it forward. She'll go left with it. Emma Tarafenko cuts it out. One of the captains for Old Dominion. Moxley. Moxley's taken over an outside back spot midway through the season and held it down, helping to stabilize this back line. Here's Della Peruta, long distance look, well long. Emily Moxley, Anson Doran says her best quality is serving the ball. That's why she's taken over there. Let's get a look at Talia Della Peruta. ODU making some subs here. It includes Carla Morich, the senior from Germany team's goal leader in all-conference selection. Della Peruta drops it back for more. The Tar Heels will try and build again. Ten minutes gone, second half action. 
A goal kick forthcoming in this NCAA first round matchup. Old Dominion and North Carolina meeting for the first time as varsity programs. Two matchups in Carolina history against the old Old Dominion club team. Back in 1980 and 1982, Carolina won 9-1 in Norfolk, October 11th, 1980. And then won 4-0 at the WAGSL tournament, October 10th, 1982. When you start looking back at the Carolina record book, some of those early games against club teams, whether they be from colleges or even just youth clubs, sometimes... Tar Heels would play two games in a day, three games in two days in those early years, in the early 80s. That includes those couple of ODU club matchups. You don't have to go all that far back to find the last time that Carolina played a team for the first time. It's Northwestern, September the 2nd, 2021, a 2-0 Carolina win. Last time the Tar Heels played an opponent for the first time ever in the NCAA tournament, Denver in the second round in 2020. 2-0 Tar Heel win. Throw here for ODU as the Monarchs try and make their way on the scoreboard. Heading down toward half an hour left. Tori Hansen, her first two assists of the season today on beautiful balls forward. The goals from Maddie Dahlien and Avery Patterson. After Ali Sentner's unassisted goal in the sixth minute. Harper. Out wide for Arndt. Good ball. But right to Emmy Allen. Moore will lead the break for the Tar Heels. Patterson, all sorts of space over the top. Sentner tried to get there. Ultimately, it's ushered out of bounds. A couple of subs here for Carolina. Moore will hop off. Pierce will replace her. Cox will be replaced by the second goal scorer, Matty Dahlien. So same substitution pattern for the Tar Heels as we saw in the first half. We touched on this in the first half, and yes, Avery Patterson scored that third goal for the Tar Heels, her 11th of the season, but Anson Dorrance's mission for the offensive attack to come from sources other than Avery Patterson, that mission has been accomplished tonight. Dowling's second goal, Sentner getting involved, and a major bounce back for the Tar Heels after that Florida State loss. Della Peruta pushing it forward. Dahlien again. Here's the speed. Dahlien gets the corner turn. Here's a cross and another goal. A goal and an assist for Dahlien. This one's finished by Ali Sentner. It's Sentner's first career two-goal game. And the young duo combining to push the lead to 4 0. Allie Sentner becomes just the second Tar Heel with a brace this season. Guess who had the first? It was Avery Patterson. But a four point game for Sentner, a three point game for Dahlien. And two youngsters. 
a redshirt freshman and a true freshman getting involved in the scoring tonight in a major way. So 4 nothing Tar Heels now. Carolina on the attack again. Tell you what, having the conversation about alternate sources of offense beyond just Avery Patterson and then Dowling and Sentner combined for that goal. Makes this broadcast look smart, that's for sure. So the Tar Heels in front, 4 to nothing. It's just their fourth four-goal game of the season. We say just because certain points through the illustrious history of this program, there have been years where Carolina's put up goals in numbers. A 6-0 win against Baylor marked their season high. That was way back on August 28th. Since then, a couple of 4-0 wins in conference play, home to Pitt and at Miami. But a Tar Heel team that scored just one goal across the ACC tournament. 200 minutes they played there. Anson Dorrance's team needed PKs after a scoreless draw to get by arch rival Duke, then fell to Florida State 2-1. And Anson said even though his team is so used to winning and is wired for excellence, Perhaps sometimes the best learning moments can come from those tough losses like the Florida State game. No corners, lowest number of shots on the year, squandering the one nothing lead and seeing what's become an arch rival. Not quite at the level of Duke, but still a rival nonetheless in Florida State. So the Tar Heels won another one potentially. It's Colton moving forward. And we get a foul here. but the disappointment of that game on Sunday and its result, the word Anson used was it's perhaps a springboard into this NCAA tournament because the ACC tournament's behind us, the regular season's behind us. Good to see everyone okay. Now it's on to the NCAA tournament where the mission for North Carolina is a 22nd national championship or 22nd college cup title. Count the AIAW title, it would be 23. It's a pretty special number in these parts. But the road there for the Tar Heels, it will not be easy. Georgia, a tough team, would be up next. Bulldogs advanced over another group of Bulldogs from Samford, the Southern Conference champions, yesterday. Double Bulldogs. Free kick for ODU just across the midline here. But then you look at the way the seeding shook out in this quadrant of the bracket. Stanford is the three seed. BYU is the six. And obviously, both of those programs a little bit down from where they've been at some of their maximum potential years. And you think back to Stanford's 2019 national title not that long ago. BYU played for a college cup last year. Fell to Florida State in the title as the game changers come on here for Carolina. 27 minutes remaining. But if the Tar Heels hold on to this one and get by Georgia, either way, that is a whale of a round of 16 matchup in Chapel Hill. Either Stanford or BYU. And BYU came here to Chapel Hill for an exhibition back in August. Stanford played here last year in a non-conference game that the Tar Heels needed overtime to win. If that game was played this year, it would have ended in a draw because there is no overtime anymore in the regular season. 
So point being is neither of those programs will be intimidated by the fact that they are playing here because they've been here before. Monarchs into the box. Turkaloo over it, trying to keep up the pressure. Runs hard into Ali Gambone. Oh, gosh. Eche Turkaglu, all Sunbelt first team selection and a team captain. Down hard after that contact with Gambone, incidental contact. There'll be a foul on Gambone. John Rush sets everybody up, puts the line down, and a free kick for Old Dominion. It'll be taken by the freshman from Mexico City, Andrea Balcazar Algarin. 21 Navy Blue. Sends it on frame, and Emmy Allen directs it away. It'll bounce out for a corner, Old Dominion's first of the game. They opt to play direct. May have been headed toward the post either way. Allen avoids danger, and ODU will line up for this corner. Opportunity here for the Monarchs to get on the scoreboard, trailing 4 nothing. Second ball. Sember clears it away for the Tar Heels. Carolina off to the races. Watts trying to save it in the corner. It'll be a goal kick for Allen. Carolina weathers the storm. Tar Heels playing tonight without Sam Meza. Meza, all ACC selection, has battled shin splints throughout the year. And there have been games along the way, especially weeks with two games in a week where she has been held out of competition. And another memorable time in the Central Florida game, the non-conference finale, where Tar Heels planned to keep her out of competition. As we have a Monarch down along the near sideline, it looks like cramps for Anessa Arndt, the Cary, North Carolina native, playing so close to home on the sport's biggest stage in the NCAA tournament. That's leadership right there. Team captain, Eche Turkoglu, helping to stretch her out. And another captain, Emma Tarafenko, right there over top of her with some words of encouragement. Vanessa Arndt, player that the Monarchs call the unsung hero for the team. Nearly 1,600 minutes this season, 10 times playing the full 90. Now, further medical attention for Art. It's a little warm for mid-November. Temperatures in the upper 60s, even at kickoff after a 70-degree humid day. They are supposed to dip overnight here, though, in the Triangle region. If you're watching locally, bring out that winter coat and turn on the heat this week. Point being is that by next weekend, when it's time for... Carolina, Georgia, Stanford, and BYU to take the field here at Dorrance. Weather conditions could be very, very different. And a nice round of applause for Arndt as she gets to her feet. Great sportsmanship for both sides. Some of the Tar Heels applauding her on as well.
So Art will head off. Reagan Tate appears off the bench for the 11th time this season. Senior from Virginia Beach. Started all 19 matches on the back line last year. But a bench contributor this year for ODU. It'll be Tate to throw it in. As we get back to play about 23 and a half minutes. Remaining in this one, North Carolina has been the aggressor from the get-go. Two goals in the first half, two so far in the second half. Ali Sentner, sixth minute. Matty Dahlin, 29th minute. Avery Patterson in the 49th. And then Ali Sentner in the 60th. Sentner's first career brace. Display of speed from Sember. Down along the end line. Now it goes. Throw for ODU. Jenna Davely, or the freshman from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, hands it off to a teammate. It's Riley Kennett. Gambone. Not wide for Moxley. Hard contact between Maggie Pierce, the Monarch that's still down. Looks like Mariano, Malia Mariano, that took the hard tumble. Ball bounces just past Carla Moric. You see Mariano getting to her feet here. Amy Allen content to take her time with her team up four. Second most goals scored in a game by Carolina this season. Matching the Pitt and Miami wins in the regular season. And overall, a really nice bounce back performance after an ACC tournament that did not go the way the Tar Heels hoped. Perhaps thinking of more, Tarafenko sends it into the crowd. And it bounces right back down on the field. Paige Tolentino to throw it in for the Tar Heels here. Sember. Gambone. Sember again from outside the box. Thought she was going to shoot it there. Moxley. For Murphy. Murphy's cross hits the side netting. It'll be a goal kick for Old Dominion with 20 minutes left. Emily Murphy out of Windsor, England. Trained with Chelsea before coming over. Three starts this season. Has appeared off the bench, though, in the other 17 matches. All freshman team in the ACC a year ago. Led the team with 16 points. And it is attacking players like her that make this team one that Anson Dorrance has said is perhaps his deepest ever, with the exception of center back. 
Yet so far throughout this season, Carolina has been able to withstand that. We were starting to talk about it a little bit ago, just how exciting the matchups next weekend could be and a potential Carolina-Stanford or Carolina-BYU uh, matchup in the round, of, the round of 16 if the Tar Heels can get by Georgia, which again is a big if. So he told you, Anson Doran says he wakes up on the game day of each round of the NCAA tournament, convinced his team will be eliminated that particular day. The nervous energy. It's what fuels greatness. But a Tar Heels team that has overcome those injuries throughout the year will have to do so in a major way as they push toward an unprecedented 31st College Cup, 22nd NCAA national title, 23rd overall national title. Gambone into space. Forward for Della Peruta, diving to take it in, Breed it, Bredick. Another look at this one. Sember again. Bella Sember has been active as a game changer off the bench. Check out the speed. Della Peruta again inside the box. Can she get the corner turned? Cannot. Out of bounds. It goes for a goal kick. So a sub for Old Dominion here. It'll be a sub of the midfield for the Monarchs. And Yulia Kristuk checks back in. Tori Hansen, two assists today. The special season for the Carolina center back continues. Moxley forward. Tarafenko got just enough to delay that through ball. Pierce over the top. Dahlien, golden and assist today. Sember again, out wide for Murphy. Initial touch by Murphy, too heavy. Carolina will have the throw, though. Sember blocked off the back of Riley Kennett. Chris took the lead the break for Old Dominion. North Carolina just about 15 minutes away from improving to 140-16-5 all-time in NCAA tournament matchups. Advancing to the second round for the 40th time in 41 tournaments. Starters will bounce off the bench for Carolina. They will come back in here as they are permitted to do once in the second half in college soccer. Danae Harper checks in for Old Dominion here. As Emma Tarafenko exits.
Christook trying to turn. Pierce got there for the Tar Heels. And here come the starters back in for Carolina. Ready to finish out the final 13 and a half minutes. Two goals each half for Carolina. Led 2-0 at the break. And erased all doubts with two more here in half number two. Julia Dorsey back in, pushing through illness to play today. Make the start. Moxley. Kate Fossey in for the first time today. Also... Lauren Wrigley into the proceedings for the Tar Heels. So it's some starters returning across the midfield. And Avery Patterson's dropped back to the back line, playing outside left back for Carolina. While some fresher faces and Wrigley and Fossey coming in up front. Avery Patterson came into this program as a defender, moved to the front line last year, helped spark the offense for the Tar Heels, but now logging some minutes at the outside back spot, returning to her roots, if you will. Tar Heels under 12 minutes away from a matchup with the Georgia Bulldogs. It'll be the fifth all-time meeting between the programs. Carolina leads the series 4-0. They have not conceded a goal to Georgia. All-time goal differential, 20 to nothing. Carolina won 9-0 in 2001, 3-0 in 2004, 4-0 2008, and then 4-0 2009. So Bulldogs and Tar Heels... For the first time since 2009. Coming up next week. Be sure to check out NCAA.com for official game times. You can catch the action here on ESPN+. Look at Patterson making a run. Can Della Peruta get there. Hard tumble against that fall brick wall. That's all padded back there. And the Tar Heels will have a corner. They're fourth. Not a particularly high corner night for the Tar Heels, who came into play. Tops in the ACC, nearly seven per game. But four is a lot better than the none that they had against Florida State. Low flat corner, Della Peruta knocks it down. And out again for corner number five. Most importantly for the Tar Heels, though, the clock continues to roll. Forward toward Hansen. Second ball, Wrigley. Moxley sends it back in. Moxley trying to slip it forward. Takes it back near the top of the box. Wrigley just off the bench. 14th appearance of the season for Wrigley, who's made one start. It was against Missouri back on September the 1st. Sub here for ODU. And 
heading off for the Monarchs. Anche Turkoglu. As Ryan Parncut comes on. And Angie Hind is starting to take her seniors out of this game. A senior class at Old Dominion that even though they're going to come up short tonight, back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament trips, they entered last year having been once in program history, well before any of them ever got to campus. But now in two different conferences, league champions, Last year in Conference USA, battling Duke on the road in the first round of the NCAAs. Now taking on North Carolina here this year after winning the Sun Belt title. An old Dominion's entire program, but the seniors especially, so much to be proud of with their accomplishments this season and last. Dorsey, Moxley now. Patterson playing up from her outside back spot. Forward for Fossey, can't get the header on frame. Kate Fossey, the freshman from Phoenix. Check out this ball from Patterson. Fossey just can't quite get it on there. Yulia Christuk headed off. India Hunter off as well. High fives and hugs from their teammates over there. And when you think about where Old Dominion was at the start of September, 0-4, as Angie Hines said, you know, Played hard against some really good opponents. And all of a sudden looked up your 0-4 and we said, how did we get here? Some teams could have crumbled at that point, but the Monarchs used that as a springboard to turn the season around, to go into the Sun Belt. Got into the conference tournament as the number six seed. And a memorable week in Foley, Alabama. Ended with them hoisting a trophy last week for the second time in as many years. Great, great season for Old Dominion. And they certainly fought hard tonight. Important learning five and a half minutes here for the Tar Heels. It is so important to learn how to properly close out a game. And even up 4 nothing here, being able to make smart passes, being able to put away the Monarchs. That's what Anson Dorrance will want to see out of his team. Celebrate the win, and then start looking forward to Georgia. North Carolina, Georgia, Stanford, BYU. What a fun pod coming to Dorrance Field next week. Fossey had the header just a moment ago. Turns the corner into the box. Kate Fossey. Kennett sends it away. And a North Carolina throw here. Patterson toward the post. Tarios thought they had a look there. Fossey. So you see this ball from Patterson. Fossey unable to put it home. Into the side netting. So close. 
Old Dominion substitution. Jenna Davelier checks out. So we roll toward three and a half to go. North Carolina opened the scoring pretty early in this one. Sixth minute goal by Ali Sentner. But then it stayed 1-0 for a while. Dominion had a couple looks in there. Matty Dahlien scored in the 29th minute, making the score 2-0 at that juncture. Avery Patterson's 11th goal of the season just moments into the second half, 49th minute. That was the one that put the game away. Erased any doubt of Old Dominion mounting a comeback in the second half. And Ali Sentner, her first career brace as she scored again in the 60th minute. All in all, quite the bounce back night for North Carolina on multiple fronts. Coming off of that ACC tournament final loss to Florida State and the draw before it against Duke. Starting to see some more playmakers step up offensively. And then doing the best they can to erase those mental demons after the one nothing loss to South Carolina in this round of the tournament a year ago. Their first ever NCAA first round exit. Emily Moxley, plenty of space. Fossey with the keeper off her line. Wrigley's going to take a chance here, and Lauren Wrigley with the goal. It's the first goal of the career of Lauren Wrigley. ODU couldn't get the ball cleared cleanly thanks to the threat of Fossey. Wrigley is there to bend it home. And a fifth goal for the Tar Heels tonight. So now five goals puts this game in sole possession of second place this season in terms of most goals in a game for Carolina. Still one shy of the six they scored against Baylor in late August. For ODU, conceding four was already a season high. So Lauren Wrigley coming off the bench, scoring her first goal of her career. Just adds another element to a feel-good Saturday night for the Tar Heels. Shot number now 15 for Carolina. Shots on goal, 8-2 Tar Heels. One minute. One minute remaining. Tar Heels content to just ping it around the back line. Wasting away the final minute here at Dorrance Field. Well, a quick start and a relentless attack in North Carolina back to their winning ways both this season and in this opening round of the NCAA tournament. Their 140th all-time win in the NCAAs to just 16 losses and five draws. And a date with the Georgia Bulldogs next week in the round of 32. Stanford and BYU will also come to Dorrance Field. The Carolina-Georgia winner and the Stanford-BYU winner will meet up at Dorrance Field in the round of 16. For Old Dominion, hats off to the Monarchs on a special season and a Sunbelt championship. But North Carolina moving on to round number two. And the bench comes to mob Lauren Wrigley, celebrate her first career goal 
the fifth of the night and a 5 nothing win for the Tar Heels who bounce back from their ACC tournament final loss and bounce back from last year's defeat against South Carolina in the first round. North Carolina victorious tonight against Old Dominion. The Tar Heels to 16-4-1 on the season. ODU completes their campaign 9-9-3.